Okay, today we're gonna to look at making two different types of sliding trays. Um, so pull out tabs in Edge Animate, one using the built-in function of swipe left and swipe right, and the other using the jQuery UI function of draggable. So I think we'll do the draggable first. So I'm gonna use this um, slider on the right here, which you see as I've created it as a symbol. And then if you look here into my library, you see I have two symbols, slider right and slider left. And then under my scripts, you'll see that I have imported the jQuery file, which itself must be the very top of the list for it to work. And then I've got the, <coughs> sorry, the jQuery UI touch punch, which allows, enables the um, touch sensitivity on devices and the jQuery UI, okay, which inside there has the function that we're going to use, which is draggable. And you simply connect those scripts by clicking the plus on the scripts and add JS file from disk. Okay, and go and collect your downloaded JavaScript files. So quite simply, all we need to do for this is with the symbol made, okay, so all we need to do is add some code to the stage to tell it to make that symbol, which I've got here called slider right, draggable. So on my stage layer in the timeline to the left, I'll click in the open actions brackets, and then I select creation complete. And now we can simply just type in a little bit of code we need. So it's SYM for symbol. So symbol dot dollar sign, open our brackets, quotations, and then the name of our symbol, which is slider right. Close the quotations, close the brackets, and then we do a full stop, a dot, and then we tell it to use the draggable function. Done. So that first bit of code is just gonna make that symbol draggable. So we should be able to get hold of it and drag it around. So let's just quickly test that. go and action okay make sure you don't have any of these things on there as I just had so you don't want any lefts and tops so make sure when you move around your slider tray you've got your auto keyframe turned off as it plays around with where where it allows you to drag from, if there's a left and a top on there. So check that again quickly, having fixed that up. Should now be able to get hold of the tab, and we can. Okay, so there's our draggable, it's perfect, except it allows me to drag it anywhere I like, straight off the screen. We want to constrain that so it just comes out horizontally and can only go as far as the tab and go back as far as that tab. So we need to add a single function to our draggable code. So put your cursor in between the two brackets at the end of the draggable. Put on a left curly bracket and hit return. And it generates quite nicely as a closing bracket for us. Hit your tab. And then we're going to use the parameter of containment, which you can find all the details about all the different Parameters that Draggle has at jQueryUI.com on their website. And then we put on a square bracket. And this is where we need to do, unfortunately, a little bit of maths. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to move our slider tray out to its furthest point. And then what we want to give it is the coordinate. So the X coordinate of this top left hand corner, which is over here in our properties. It's the X coordinate. So it says it's four, six, four, seventy. So we put in four, seven, oh. Then a comma. 
and it wants the y coordinate. So that was the x coming in from the left, y coming down from the top. So our y coordinate is 2, 5, 3. And then it wants to know what our second x coordinate is. So we're making this a containment box, okay, which is this corner here. And we find that corner by just adding together the x in the properties and the width, which I'll just need to do. So we've got 470 and a width of 558 which gives us 1,028. And then the bottom y, okay, which is going to be the y versus plus the height. So we've got 253 and 250, so that's a nice easy one. So that's 503. And then we close our square brackets. Now we should have created a containment box. We've told it here to here. Let's have a look and see whether that's contained it for us. Oh, and before I do that, of course, when it's time to use it, I need to put this away first. That's it. It again so that the tab is where it starts where it belongs. And I can pull it out. But as you can see, it allows me to move it only a certain distance out. And it still lets me move it up and down. So let's control the axis. So it can only move along the x-axis. So it can now only move horizontally and we've set a distance of the containment box. Okay, now I cannot move it up and down. I can move it in and out. Now what we want to, be able to do though is at the moment, as you can see, I can move it out, I can put it back. The nice thing about the draggable is that the user has complete control of it. But at the moment, if I turn it back, as you can see, it goes all the way back in. So we just need to fiddle around with one of these dimensions. So that's 970, it's about 50. Let's change this by about 50. So let's make that 980 and see what effect that has. There you go. Now I'm going to pull it out. It's as far as it will go. I can't take it anymore when I put it back. Okay, I'm left with the tab. Now we can increase that slightly. If we wanted to get the full tab, make that 970. All that's done is it's now only allowing it to come out. It's decreased the size of the containment box, which allows the tab to be shown. So we've come out that far. We go about that far. And there we go, there's a draggable sliding tray. And now the other sliding tray, we're just going to use a swipe left and a swipe right. So on this sliding tray here, the sliding left, this time we're going to turn on our auto keyframe and auto transition. Because first of all, we're just going to make a simple little animation. <clears throat> we're just going to move it along the x-axis. So on zero on your timeline, we're going to just select the locate it with the left. And I'm going to move my playhead out to maybe one second. And then I'm going to move in my slider tray. And then on that bit of animation. on a little bit of easing so that it slows in when it comes in. Okay, so that's pretty simple. 
We also want to turn for the stage the autoplay off. So now that animation will not play until we tell it to play. And now this time we add our code to the symbol itself. So select the symbol of slider left, open the actions, and we're going to do this on, first of all, swipe right. So on the slider tray, we're doing swipe right, and then it's playback, play, stage. And then we're going to add swipe left by clicking the plus. On swipe left, we're going to go for playback, play reverse, stage. So when I swipe to the right, it's going to play that animation. If I swipe to the left, it's going to play that animation in reverse. Now, unfortunately, I can't test this on my computer because the computer doesn't except a swipe function. But all I do is I'd swipe this, it would play it, it would come out, and if I swipe back, it would play it back the other way, reverse it. Okay, that's two versions of a slider tray for you, one using draggable and one using um, swiping. Just choose when you want to use one. The, the pluses of each is the slider, using the swipe is a simpler product to make. Okay, and it does have a lovely action, the way it eases in and eases out but the user doesn't have full control, it will always come 100% out and 100% back away. Um, the draggable gives the user complete control. They actually are pulling that out and in so they can stop it halfway or whatever. Okay, that's slider trace for you. Okay, thanks, bye.